What's up guys, this is Forrest Knight and welcome to iDev Journey episode 12. 12. And today is not going to be exactly what you expected. So in episode 11, I said I'm going to make a video of me going back and remaking my upgraded version of the Miracle Pills app. And I'm not going to do that. And I have a good reason. It's whenever I go back to remake that app, Something in my brain just wants me to just keep on moving forward with my course. It doesn't want me to go back and rebuild that app. Meaning, instead of going back and rebuilding, although that'll help concrete those things you know, into my brain, if I do it three, four, five times, then I'll remember it easier. But I just want to keep on trucking along with, with the course and what I'm studying now. And that's every time I go back to do my iDev work, I mean, that's that's what I do as I keep on going. I don't want to go back. And I don't know. It's just something where I'm a lot more motivated to go back or I'm a lot more motivated to keep on going along rather than going back and completing that. If you only tune in for the iDev Journey videos, then you won't know. But if you watch some of my other videos, which is my last one, the one about the iPhone 7 case, you'll see that I got a new phone. It's the iPhone 7 because my other phone broke, completely busted the screen, and it was just all messed up. And I figured I was gonna get a new phone within the next year anyway, because within the next year, as we know, Apple releases a new iPhone once a year. At least that's been their theme for the past however many years. It's normally around, what, when was this released? Beginning of November or October or something? And they do that every single year consistently. So I'm gonna be getting the latest best phone I can get by the, by this time next year anyway, so I might as well get it now. And the only reason I'm saying that is because I'm going to be developing iOS apps and I want to run it on like its latest, you know, I want to run it on its latest software on its latest hardware. So I want to do that. Also, I may get like a lower spec older phone because I want to have the ability to test my, my apps on the simulator on the best one possible, well, maybe not the best one possible, this is a 128 gig, there's a 256, and supposedly there are performance differences. I don't know, I've seen some tests, I don't know how conclusive they are. And this isn't the plus, it is just a regular size phone. So I want to have the latest hardware to test it on, but I also want like a lower scale model as well as a simulator in this. So I can just kind of see full range. I don't think I'll be making any iPad apps as of right now, or make it even compatible with the iPad. I don't know yet. I mean, I'm just focusing on one thing at a time, one thing at a time. If I spread myself too thin, then I won't get anything done. I'd rather build one big tower than a bunch of, you know. It's, it's like it's like specializing in one language. You know, do you want to get really good at Swift or just kind of know Swift, Java, C++, C++, all that stuff? I'd rather get really good at Swift or really good at Java or really good at C++. Whatever you want to do, just get really good at that before you move on to the next. So the iDev work, uh, the Udemy course I'm taking, Mark Price's Udemy course, I'm currently doing, or I finished up the retro calculator. I don't remember where I finished up in the last video, what the update was, but ever since Miracle Pills, we went through scroll view. Well, that was with Miracle Pills. We went through segways. And segways are basically ways for, when you open up your Xcode and you create a single view application, you'll notice that you have one, one screen. I turned it this way because it automatically goes like that. But you have one screen and you won't, so one view controller. You only have one view controller. And segues are basically segues from one view controller, the main one, to another. So you add in a view controller and it kind of shows you the segues. And also we learn that if you hit one button from one view to another view, so say you hit a buy now button, back to the Miracle Pills app. You hit buy now and it takes you to like the success screen or it takes you to like where you put in your credit card information or something. You want that, basically you have a stack view. So this is your main and then the next one will stack on top. If you hit back and you don't do this properly, then this one will also stack on top again. So instead of just having two, you'll have three. And then if you go back again, then you have four, five, six, seven, eight. Instead, what you wanna do is make the segue right so when you hit back, this literally goes back on top and now you only have two. 
I know this isn't the best comparison, but before you had two, and then when you hit back, you had three, and then you did something else, you had four, five, six, seven, and it just stacked on top of each other. You kind of want it to refresh, essentially. So you want your main one to always be there. Well, not always be there. But you want, if you hit back, for it to actually go back and not just stack another one on top. If, I don't know if I'm really clear. I'll try to try to clear it up with some pictures or something. Retro calculator. So basically, this is what the retro calculator looks like. As you can see, it just has retro numbers, retro buttons, and also has retro sounds. Where whenever you hit the button, it makes a sound. I think I said this in the last iDev that of course that's inconvenient and annoying to hear that sound every time you hit a button, but it's just we're just learning with it. And after that, so we did playing audio files, custom fonts, and in lecture 56, yeah, lecture 56, iOS 10 app retro calculator, math and logic. This is when we really implement the calculator. See, right now, I say right now, with when we're talking, when you hit the buttons, nothing's really happening. Maybe you're displaying something on the screen if you got that far, but we need to actually, if we want to we want to do eight divided by two, we want the outcome to be four. And this really isn't that hard. We've already gone over our our operators, our operators, just like you know PEMDAS basically. You we don't have parentheses, but we have or exponents. Oh geez, so MDAS <laughs> multiply divide add, subtract, that's what we have, and equals. So equals just finalizes everything after you type everything in, of course. And we just figure out a way to implement all of those so it makes sense. You can't go in and do the math for it. You can't go in and say one times two equals two, one times three, 12 times 24 equals yada yada. You can't do that, so you basically do x times y equals x times y. So luckily someone, or equals z, whatever it is. Luckily someone, Apple, created the Swift language and it does all that backend stuff for us. So we, in our code, we just implement a plus, a minus, and we attach it to that exact button. Whenever it's pressed, the code just multiplies it or whatever you know operation you need to do and then it allows us to not have to worry about all that stuff and it does it for us. I mean, it's, it's very simple when you look at the big picture. Imagine if you were to have to go in there and actually do all the math. We just have to kind of write a little bit of code to make it work. And then after that in lecture 75, it's exercise enhancing the calculator. So basically what we're doing is enhancing the calculator. We're implementing a launch screen, which if you've ever opened an app and you see like a quick you know screen maybe just like one color with the company's logo. You see that for just a second and then it'll actually load the actual application. That is the launch screen. So this exercise implements with the graphics that are given to us from Mark, just a quick little launch screen that's compatible in all sizes. I believe even the iPad. So the smallest iPhone up to an iPad, the launch screen and our constraints are right so it fits on everything. We also have the ability to clear. Well, we have to implement the ability to clear. Right now with the app, we aren't able to clear. Once we do the exercise, we're able we implement a clear button so we're able to clear out what we had just done. And I don't remember if I mentioned this earlier in the video, but this is just an update video. We're not going to actually do the exercise that we're just talking about. I'm just going to update you where I am and I'll show you guys a little bit of, of where I am and, and whatnot, but we're not actually going to sit down and do the exercise together unless you tell me you want to. So that's another reason why I didn't want to go back and do that other application again because I didn't know if anyone actually wanted to see that. No one, no one let me know. So if you want to see anything from now on, if you want me to show you guys my process of building the app from scratch to the finished product or from doing every single exercise. If you want to see me doing the exercise or do the exercise together, let me know. And let me know in the comments below or just hit it with a thumbs up. If you hit it with a thumbs up, then that'll be your indication to me that you want to see what we're just discussing. And finishing up this update is where we come to size classes in iOS 10 and Xcode 8. I still have a little bit to go on this. 
I still need to re-familiarize myself with it. I'll go over it at the beginning of next video, next item of journey. So that'll be item of journey episode 13. And then the exercise auto lay it, auto layout is next. If I see that you guys want me to do the auto layout exercise, just like a real quick, maybe a sped up screen capture with me talking over it or something like that. Not sitting here for 10, 20, 50 minutes. I don't know how long it'll take. But not me sitting there for that long, just kind of me doing it like I always do, just recording it and voicing over it for you guys. Let me know, like I said before. And I wanted to end the update right here is because next next week we're going to go into the next app, which is iOS 10 app, Party Rock Mansion Intro. I don't know. I don't know what, what it's about. I haven't gone into it. That's lecture 60. 60. Lecture, lecture 60. And with that being said, if you haven't already guessed or figured it out... I know in another video I said how long does it take or will it take for me to complete this course. It's going to be a whole lot longer than I anticipated. I wanted to finish it by the end of this year, but at least by you know the first week or two in January. But I don't think I'll be done until, I don't know, January to February area, which I'm okay with. I'd rather do it right the first time than kind of try to speed through it and then have to reference this more than I would if I didn't, you know, if I would have just kind of slowed it down, worked on the app by myself like I did with that other app that from last video. And I may may even tweak the retro calculator as well. If I didn't slow myself down and I just wanted to speed right through it, I wouldn't be learning as much. So I'm not really I'm not really on a time constraint. I have goals for where I want to be, but that's uh that's just to help me organize everything. So like I said, I want to have some apps built by the end of next year. And of course, if I finish this by even by the end of February, March, or even April, I don't expect to go that long, but who knows? I know I'll be able to build at least one app by the end of the year. And I want to have a multiple, but you know. So that'll be at the end of 2017. 2018 is when I want to start freelancing. I've talked about all this. And I'm just going to be trucking along, you know, I'm just going to keep Keep it going as much as I can. Learn as much as I can. I'm still trying to, still trying to figure out my my schedule. I kind of had a set schedule, but it's kind of taken a turn where it's not as good as it used to be. So you know, I work eight to five, and then my my normal schedule is I work eight to five. I come home, and until six to six thirty, I will eat and just kind of wind down. Sometimes, which hasn't been too recently, my girlfriend could attest, I would like to you know, push that back to seven because I want to go to the gym. But recently, I haven't been pushing that back to seven because I haven't been going to the gym. But I may just start going to the gym right after work, coming home, eating, being done with all that by seven, hopefully, 7.15 at the latest, and then getting to work. The thing is, once I'm home, I have... My homework to do, I have four classes right now. I have my homework to do, which, you know, maybe I want to set aside two hours for that. Well, if I don't get done by until 7 with the other stuff, then I have to go until 9 to 9.30. So a lot of times it runs over. And then from 9 to 9.30, I want to do an hour and a half, two hours, whatever it may be, of iDev work. You know, I said two and a half hours, but that's a little much. So I'd like to do two hours of iDev work. So from 9 or 9.30 until 11 or 11.30, it's just a lot to squeeze in there. So it's not going exactly as planned, but it's coming along. I mean, you know, what, what more can I ask for? So that's it for episode 12. I'm going to keep you guys updated a little better on this Friday. So Thursday's Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving to everyone in the U.S. who is celebrating Thanksgiving on Thursday. And then Friday... I'm heading down with my girlfriend and her family to her grandpa's Christmas tree farm in North Carolina. So I don't know how that's going to be. I don't know if I'll be able to... I know I know. Uh, Mark created an app. I don't know if the Udemy will work. But I may be able to have... As long as I download all the assets before going, on the car ride down there, I may be able to watch the videos on my phone because the LTE and whatnot, although I use data which is kind of a lot. It's a nine hour drive. And then I could code on my computer. I don't need Wi-Fi to run Xcode and to do everything as long as I have everything downloaded, all the assets and whatnot. 
So I may do some iDev work on the drive down there. I, I don't know. I got to play with how it works out. And then I don't think I'll be back until like Sunday, Sunday night. I don't, I don't know the exact plan. So this video is a little bit longer than I wanted it to be, but I figured I'd update you guys on, on everything, everything that we talked about this video. And until next week, have a good one.